Alright, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've been working on some stick videos because I know I hadn't been given stick welding a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of time, and I know some of you are interested in stick more so than anything else. So I've been working on it just to show you here's a root pass on a 3G welding test. But today's video is about welding 4140. I got some 4140 jobs come in the shop. 4140 is very similar to 4130, a little bit more carbon in it. 4130 is used for aircraft, small aircraft fuselages, and all kinds of motorsport, motorsports equipment and bicycles and things like that. But it welds a whole lot like uh, just regular old cold rolled steel. On the thin 4130 jobs or 4140, whatever, mostly thin stuff would be 4130. You just run a stringer straight past like this. But on something a little thicker like this, and this is just plain old steel, you might need a little bit bigger weld and so you might do just a little bit of a weave pass and uh, feed a little rod in there to make it make it bigger. This is going to be similar to the job that I'm that or jobs that I should say that I'm doing uh, in this video. You know, this is showing steel. This is the job. This is a uh, crow's foot attachment for a big torque wrench, and it's got a little half inch drive uh, insert. And we're going to weld it with ER 70s2 wire mainly because that's what the drawing spec out and because it needs a black oxide finish when it's done and that will uh, accept that finish and, and, uh, and be a good looking part when it's done. Now I was using this little third hand to hold it and you might you could see that spark just then if you rewind it you could see a little spark come off that third hand. That was a problem. That, it, that's putting arc strikes on my parts and this, this particular part is a nicely finished uh, polished part that was in a tumbler and I don't want any arc strikes on it. So that one had to get polished out. So to fix that problem, I uh, put a little aluminum bronze weld on the end of my little third hand tool. And from then on, uh, the next jobs I did, I didn't have that problem. But uh, I'm, I'm bouncing around here chronologically from video to video. You can see I'm using the third hand again now without the, without the aluminum bronze on it here. Uh, and uh, it didn't give me any more problems other than that that day. But I decided I'd, I'd fix that issue because uh, it's just annoying and, and sometimes it's a problem to have arc strikes especially on hardenable material like this. This is going to the heat treaters afterwards and all that and, and in the area where that arc strike was it wasn't a problem but it's not a good thing no matter how you look at it. So this uh, little technique I'm using today on this I'm using uh, just a little slight weave technique and on a, on a joint like this it's kinda like a lap joint what I'm trying to do is just nip that corner of the little insert there. Sometimes I nip it more than I should, but my what I'm trying to do is just barely nip it so I don't chew it up and so also I get as much weld as I can on there and it looks nice going right up to the corner. So repositioning this thing around. So really the third hand is a really convenient way to reposition a small part like this. And the biggest thing is it's not so much it's going to clamp it rigid, but um, Number one, you, it's an added ground, and number two, sometimes when you weld on something like this, it sets up the speed wobbles on you and starts really chattering, and you get, you have to stop. So uh, the third hand just kind of is a real quick way, rather than having to stop and reclamp and and all that stuff. It's a real quick way, a real quick way to hold your part still. Again, just a slight weave, leaving the rod in, and trying to just barely nip that corner. And then when, at the end, when the rod angle gets kind of poor, you can dip it in and out. I'm, I'm fighting a camera in my way, obviously, here, so that's my excuse anyway. Now you can see how much that looks like. I'll go back to the steel here. Very much weldability, the, the way the puddle looks on 4140 and 4130 is very similar to plain old, plain old steel. What you have to watch out for, though, is it's got it's very, a lot more crack sensitive, and since this one's going to the heat treater, it's going to get a full anneal and a, a heat and quench and all that stuff. I don't, I'm going to have to be real concerned about things. All I have to do is make sure that I'm, I taper off slow and use a little preheat before I got started, taper off so I don't leave cracks, make sure there's no cracks in the tacks, and, you know, Swap directions here, go the other way. That one's just about done. 
taper off nice and slow. Get it, get into the habit of holding your shielding gas over your over your weld after you're done. At least till the post flow runs out. All right. And that there's no point showing both of them, so that's that's about it. These are done. They're going to the heat treaters now. Going to uh, get retumbled first, and then to the heat treaters, and then the black oxide finish. Now, now you can see the modification on the third hand tool here, the little aluminum aluminum bronze ball that I put on there. It's coming in real handy on the parts that came in the next day. Didn't get any arc strikes on any of these things. You know, I talked about the slots on this little portable Nomad welding table made by Stronghand, and uh, they came in handy for pulling a pin out of a part, clamping it down, and they're coming in handy like crazy for these little little parts like this. Uh, I can lay the part down, get a tack on it, and then lay it, uh, stick it down in the slot and spin it around and get a good angle on it like this and uh, I can just weld a little, spin a little, weld a little, spin a little and you know rather than chucking the part up in some kind of elaborate uh, clamping device or vice and having to re loosen it up and spin it and all that it just makes things go pretty quick. Again the two techniques dipping and then when I'm near an edge like this just leaving the rod in the puddle with a little slight weave is, is helping. This is 4140 welded to 4140 here again I'm using the ER70S2 rod again because of the black oxide finish requirement. The little ball of aluminum bronze turned out to be a lot handier than I thought. Just fit right down in these little holes and, and uh, provided a real good ground so I didn't get any arc strikes on on this or the next job. Alright, we'll get rid of that one here. And the next one is a similar part, similar shaft welded to a little a round disc. Got a little chamfer on it. And when you're tack welding something around like this, see that wasn't a very tight press fit, so I can't just stick it down in the slot right away. So being able to put it in the slot keeps it from rolling. Otherwise I'd have to, you know, grab a pair of pliers and wedge it up on each side, keep it from rolling away or rolling off. And you know, something like this with a nice machine finish, it's horrible when it drops off the end of the bench and uh, you get a flat spot on it or, you know, big gouge in it. You have some splaining to do then. So this, this sets in that little groove real nice. It's real convenient. The little third hand uh, homemade tool holds it still, gets a good ground. And then again, I can slip it down inside the little uh, slot there. And because I'm going to be moving this thing every time I go just a little ways. I don't want to clamp it down so it's just nice to have have that third hand to hold it still for me and, and everything. So I'm just going to get a couple attacks on this because it, it's 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 tight. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't and also it's going to get chucked up in a lathe and spun spun real flat and uh, the weld's going to be completely cut off. So that in mind with the weld going to be machined off what I want to do is I want to make sure and flow it all the way down into that little chamfer there. So I'm only adding a little bit of rod my electrode angle is pretty horrible here. I'm, I'm starting out with an unfavorable angle, and now it's, it's a pretty decent angle. And then, of course, now the cup is blocking your view a little bit. But I kind of intended this whole thing to, to make two passes because all the welds are going to be machined off. I want to make sure and penetrate all the way down in there, and I want enough weld where it's when it's machined off, it cleans up in the lathe without having to cut much off of it at all. You can see the 303 stainless over on the left side of the screen here is kind of when I when I directed the arc over there earlier, it's kind of grainy. So I'm just I'm just kind of playing the arc not quite all the way over to the edge and just pushing a little rod in there and flowing it. And uh, again, I'd like for this to look a little bit better than it does, but I know it's going to get machined off in a lathe. And the main thing is that it's going to maintain the dimension. So you can see I kind of chased the undercut a little bit and got a little bit cattywampus, but it's going to be okay. All right, well, those are the jobs for today. That was well in 4140 and well in 4142 303 stainless. Thanks for watching. Visit weldingtipsandtricks.com.